Welcome back, everybody. We are live today for another Traders Recap. Today we have uh, the wonderful Magic Mike. Uh, for those that watched uh, Season 1, you'll know exactly who he is. Uh, but, Mike, I want you to introduce yourself. Uh, go for it. Take, uh, take the floor. Um, who are you? What's going on? Tell us. Hey, what's up, Bruno? How are you, Dom? <laughs> it's me, Magic Mike, from uh, Season 1 Traders. Uh, man, it's so good to be here and so good to be watching the new season of Traders. Honestly, it's been uh, bringing back the memories here of that manner. So I'm sure we'll have lots to talk about today, but uh, it's so far a super exciting season. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm loving I'm loving season two. I think they're doing a really, really good job. I think the, the faithfuls are wild. Uh, I think the traders are quiet. And we'll get into all that. I want to hear your thoughts on how everything is going. Uh, Dom, uh, tell us about yourself. Who are you? What's going on? Why are you here? I was, uh, I'm Dominic. If you don't know me, I was on season one of Traders Canada. Um, I'm the first eliminated contestant across all formats of the show. That's going to go down in history. Not on the good end, but on the bad end. Obviously, Mike was the winner of season one, so that's a little bit more promising than my end. So that's who I am, yeah. We, ha we have two extremes here. You're still here. like the biggest magician of the season, I'm telling you. <laughs> that, that disappearance you pulled on us. Yeah, Dom did a disappearing act, just never returned. That's the problem, you know. That's At least right. Mike, you come back every time. Dom, we don't, we got to find him. So, uh, but speaking of which, uh, D Mike, why did uh, why did Dom get kicked out? You know what? I still don't even know that, but it had nothing to do with me. So. <laughs> I'm just busting your balls. I'm busting your balls. Uh, so again, like Dom said, uh, Mike Mike uh, did win the show. Mike is the the first and only winner right now. He is the sole winner. Uh, of uh, Traders Canada season one, I, I think he did a really good job, and I have a lot of questions because one, you played as a trader, so you got like a different view of the game, a different perspective than than most players. You know, ninety nine percent of the players, or whatever the math is, uh, they're faithfuls, and 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 I feel like the traders have, uh, you know, they do definitely have some advantages, and I think that's the fun part of the game is being the trader. You don't want to be a faithful. If you're a faithful, you're kind of just kind of in the mix. The traders, for the most part, run the show. I think you did a really good job of uh, you know not being suspect. I, I feel like a lot of people didn't even know you were the trader all the way through to the end i think you did a really really good job uh and i do want to get into all that uh with you but first things first i want to talk what do you think about the cast so far from what you see uh we'll talk both the, the faithfuls the traders let's talk about the, the faithfuls first how do you think that the faithfuls are doing what, what do you think they're doing right what do you think they're doing wrong uh what do you think of the casting as a whole uh from what you've seen so far yeah, so I think, I, so far, I think it's a great cast. I think everyone is pretty unique in the sense that they offer something different for the show. And I think, um, you know, it, it's funny to watch this because so many of them are so loud and so wrong at what they're saying. And you know, I think that's what makes the show so entertaining, right? Like, you're kind of going into this blind and people don't know, they're, they're coming up with these crazy ideas which don't really make sense if you think about it. But at the same time, the game is also just about keeping yourself alive and staying in the game for as long as you can. So it's interesting to see that dynamic. I think the traders themselves have been doing a great job as well. I think they're they're awesome, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I think overall, it's so far a very fun season to watch. And, you know, I have a few predictions of what's to come, but it is hard to predict because you never know what's going to happen. And there's so many twists and turns, as Dom can tell you in this game, that every day is different and things change so quickly. So it'll be interesting to see what happens next. Yeah, I, I fully agree with you uh, 100%. I think they're very loud, very wrong, uh, which is good, I think, for, for a trader. If you're a trader, you want that. You want them to be super loud uh, and, and super wrong because then you don't have to do as much work, I, I feel. Um, if you were in this cast, what are, you, what are you doing with this faithful group? You're seeing how they're, they're, obviously there's no trust. There's so much distrust between them all, and they're so wrong, like you say. They're so loud and so wrong. Um, how do you play it as a trader? Like, are you going to like kind of fan the fire a little bit? Are you just going to kind of mind your own business? W what's the play? If Mike is in season two, uh, what are you doing in the situation when you're seeing all this chaos happen around you? So if, if that was me, if I was seeing like literally what's happening now, I would play it the way Ned is playing it. I think she's playing a great game. She's keeping quiet. Why add fuel to the fire? If there's nothing, it's already being done for you. I think the, my biggest advice would be the less you say, the better it is. Um, and try to just keep quiet, listen more to what other people are saying, especially when you have a game starting with 20 people. There's enough people there that are going to be saying crazy things, eliminating themselves in the game. So I think, you know, the quieter you are at, at this point in the game, the better it is. I, I fully, fully, fully agree with you on that. 
I think Ned is playing it perfect. I, I like what she's yeah. doing. She's staying quiet, staying out of the mix. Uh, she's getting her points in when she needs to, but she's not like pushing any narrative from what we see anyway, uh, which, which I really like. Uh, Dom, uh, fill us in. What do you think? If you're a trader right now and you're sitting there at that table and you're seeing all this chaos, what are you doing? I mean, watching the season from episode one to currently, I thought Kira was doing a good job. But now Kira's doing what I did coming on season six. She's letting her emotions get to her and she's downplaying and downgrading her game to the point where I agree with Mike at this point. Now Ned is in the driver's seat and the other two are falling behind. Mike continues to say he's going to do this and do that, but they're not showing it. He's not doing much uh, with regards to what he, he plans on doing. So I have to agree with Mike on, on Ned at this point. I was gun hoeing on Kira only because she had a lot more uh, valued relationships amongst the faithfuls to take her a lot closer to the end. Uh, but Ned at this point, Kira's letting her emotions get to her, and soon enough she might get kicked off the show because of her emotions. Who knows? She's gonna do some volume stuff or something. So uh, here's the thing, though. I, I agree. I, I like the Netta. I like what Netta's doing, and Netta's actually a very good friend of mine. I don't know if you're familiar with Big Brother Canada, Mike. Have you watched Netta's seasons at all, or uh, have you? No, I've never watched Big Brother. I've actually I've never watched reality TV before before going on this show. So that is <laughs> this awesome. is all very new to me. But now I know the concept of Big Brother, and I watched the latest U.S. season. Amazing show. So Netta was on a couple of seasons of Big Brother, and she's known as one of the best players. And, and I actually got to play with her on season five, and we worked together. So I get a, I have I see how Netta sees the game, how she plays. And, uh, you know, she was known as one of the best players uh, to play. And, and, and I got to tell you right now, playing with her, seeing how she plays and working with her, I think she's just a phenomenal player. I love the way her mind works. Uh, and I see what Netta's doing. Uh, but I also know that she's playing a very different game than she did in Big Brother. Uh, my biggest critique to Netta, and, and again, you were there. You both were there. Uh, but, Mike, you were a traitor. So you can kind of, you know, defend or, or rebuttal this. I just think she's a little too quiet. I think being quiet is a very, very, very good thing. Uh, but sometimes I feel like maybe she needs to speak up just a little bit. Not not too much where she's getting in the hot seat, but eventually someone has to be like, hey, Netta, what's your opinion? Like, what, why are you so quiet? Like, you're not saying anything. Give me a name. Um, what do you, what do you, what's that's your, you know, I, I think that's what's going to happen is I think she's too quiet to the point where people are going to be like, okay, Netta, come on. You got to give us something. Like, why are you so quiet? This, you know, you, you have to know something. You have to have a name. You have to have an opinion. What are you thinking? And I think she's doing a really good job. Of, of like keeping that out of her mouth like she's not really getting the pressure yet from what we see I, I just i just i feel like eventually people are just gonna be like all right everyone's gonna be like netta what, what do you think like come on tell us like you have to say something and it might put her in a spot that she's maybe not ready for maybe she is i, I don't know uh what are your thoughts on that, that yeah, I mean, at some point you're gonna have to say what you think but i think she's you know she has different groups of people in the house and she's probably very casually agreeing with what they're saying and saying yeah you know that makes sense to me she's um, she doesn't have to be out there loud about it either, right? Because the more you start saying someone's name, the more it's going to come back to haunt you as you go later in the game, right? Because now these people here, well, that person's been saying my name, and now, well, what are they going to do? They're probably going to vote for you at some point. So you want to limit the amount you're talking crap about people in something like this. 100%. Um, yeah, you know, you're perfect right. Perfect example, I, I, me in season one was Trevon. I said his name once, I wrote his name down. The rest of the season, he was on to me. So, you know, I tried to just keep it at Trevon for the whole season so I wasn't upsetting anyone else. No, 100%. As soon as you bring someone's name up, I think the natural defense mechanism is you're just you're going to fire back. You know, if you're coming for me, I got to go for you. If you're going to try, try to take me out, I got to take you out before you do. I think that's a natural defense. And it's and a very good point. I see it the same way where it's like, Ned is not putting anybody's name out there, so she's not getting any names back at her. But I just feel like eventually they're just going to be like, okay, Netta, like you have to give us something. Uh, I don't know if you watched the American version. There's Dan Giesling. Uh, he was kind of in the same situation. He was a traitor, uh, one of the best Big Brother players to ever play. This is the American Big Brother. Uh, he's known okay. as one of the greats, and he didn't say a word. And everyone's like, Dan, we need a name. And he just wouldn't do it. He's like, when I'm ready, I will. When I'm ready, I will. And they're like, all right, Dan's a traitor. And they voted him out, and sure enough, he was. So uh, I just feel like she needs to kind of get ahead of that a little bit. But who am I to say it? I'm, I think she's doing a great job. Like, I don't want to take anything away from her. I think she's doing a fantastic job. I really do. Uh, and I think it's – no There's also faithfuls that aren't saying names either, right? Mm -hmm. So True. I mean, there's that um, – Aaron doesn't really say many names. Right. Um, there's there's a few of them. I mean, even look at our season. Mickey made it very far in the game. He never said anyone's name. Yeah. He just kind of went with the flow. I mean, even, even you, Dom, you didn't say many names either. You were but that's, pretty... that's what Bruno's saying does occur because there was a, a point in time where 
Crystal was a very strategic and intelligent player. And she pulled me aside one time and we were sitting down there and she's the same thing. She's like, you're not really saying anybody's name. You're not really giving any context to us. Like, how do we not know you're a traitor? And me being the type of person I am, I had the ability to shut her down immediately where the conversation went to rest. But she did come at me at one point aggressively going, you're not giving us anything. Like, do we have to suspect you? And things of that nature. Because really, my my part in the whole season was to be the most quiet and dumbest faithful that there could be. Because as you said, Mickey made it close to the end, which you, you fucked him. And uh, that's, that's what game, I wanted baby. to do. That's part of the game. Because I know at least, if, at least if I got to the end, I would have had that one shot at it or two shots, depending on my intuition at the time. And it does happen. I agree with Bruno. It does happen. But if you have the ability to be quick on your feet, no, even though I was a faithful, not a tra- traitor, it's pretty easy to shut those conversations down to the point where it doesn't give those people the narrative to say, oh, yeah, so suspicious. Now, you Mike, know, so it does happen. I agree with Bruno 100%. Uh, Mike, I want to say, um, you know, you're saying how people are quiet, like Aaron and stuff. So you're a traitor. What, what's your, if you're in this season now and you're seeing people like Aaron and the teacher, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know her name off the top of my head. There's Lord. a few people. Uh, Kevin is very quiet. There's a lot of people that are like super, super quiet. Uh, you're a traitor. What, what's, your, what's your strategy going into the, is it called the turret, the conclave, uh, you know, at night when you guys get together? Yeah, the conclave. The conclave. So when you're going to the conclave and you're seeing people like Aaron, you're seeing people like the kindergarten teacher, you're seeing people like, uh, uh, I don't know, all the people that are quiet, uh, uh, Pac-Man and all these people, are, are those the people you're looking at to kill because you're like, okay, these people are getting really hard cleared. Uh, you know, people obviously trust them. Are you taking those people out? Are you taking the loud people out? Are you keeping the loud people to keep the confusion? Are you taking the people that are just their scent is so wrong that you're like, why are we getting rid of them? Let's keep them. They're, they're not on to anything. What, what's your strategy going into the conclave? Well, I'll, I'll tell you my strategy, which w- was very evident in my season, that anyone that said my name was usually gone the next day. <laughs> so I, I had this, no one caught on to that. Yeah, no one caught on to that. But like, imagine the game for me could have been very different at the end if I kept these people around. Um, so it's, um, to me, anyone that was kind of saying my name, even if it wasn't out there, but even to me or to a couple of people, they were a threat to my game. So it made more sense to get rid of them earlier in the game. So I think, you know, and I think Mike, Michael John is having that issue now too. A lot of people are starting to say his name and he wants to get rid of like, for example, Gail, who was saying his name. So you never know, like it, it's hard to say unless, and you're only allowed to get uh, murder one person a night. So it's not like- <laughs> I have a- <laughs> It was a risk or reward move for you, to be honest. I have, I have two follow-up <laughs> questions. I have two follow-up questions to that. Uh, one, you said you're taking people out that are targeting you, right? Now, there's two ways to look at that. People can be like, everybody that mentions Mike's name is dying. Why Why is that? Does he have, does, does he have something to do with this? Or you look at it like, well someone's trying to frame Mike because everyone that mentions his name is dying. So what was the consensus or was anybody even picking up on that? Because these are things that, you know, game players should pick up on. Okay. Every time someone says Mike's name, they're dead the next night or, you know, whatever. Is he getting framed? Is it him? Did anybody ever bring that up or was it just kind of like, eh, this person's dead, whatever kind of thing. Well, uh, where it came back to haunt me was at the end when uh, Koozie and I, we're going at it because then she started bringing up all the people that were gone the next day, which <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to happen. But yes, I mean, eventually, but then you each day is different, right? Like, and eventually, as the game goes on, everyone's going to have their name being said in some way. And it's just a matter of, you know, who are you willing to work with to the end, I guess. And honestly, you build these friendships with people and you're not going to get rid of the person who's closest to you until the end because they're going to help bring you further in the game. Absolutely. Right? Like, I wouldn't, okay. have, I wouldn't have murdered Dom. I would have kept him right to the end. <laughs> we were good buddies in there. So it's I like... Over, I, I also think that people, honestly, being in that house with so limited time, overanalyze things more than they really need to. It's so much more simpler than it really is. But sometimes people tend to think it's, so, it's too obvious. It's too simple. There's got to be another solution. They got to be a little bit more smarter than that, you know? So they also overanalyzed to the point where, like, Mike did what he did and no one caught on. Why? Because they probably thought that was too obvious, you know? So sometimes the simple moves create so much more in people's minds where they just 
downplay how simple it really was, and that's why they never really caught on to Mike, to be honest. I, I think Mike did a great job. I think I, from what we saw anyway on the show, nobody was suspecting you. And now maybe it's different when you're there. Sure, yeah. You know, it's a, it's a, it's it's an edited show. Now there's probably a lot of stuff we didn't see, a lot of stuff that maybe could have like made you more obvious that we didn't see, or maybe you did a better job than than we saw. Like it can go both ways, and, and I understand that from you know my experience on TV as well. Uh, they don't show everything. It's not you know the Mike show or the Bruno show or the Dom show. It's traders or Big Brother, whatever it is. That's uh, right. So yeah. To be honest with you, I didn't, and I know this might sound crazy too, but I never knew people were saying my name <laughs> throughout the whole season. So I think being oblivious to that fact helped me. Otherwise, I would have been so uh, so worried and so paranoid. But I never felt, even though every episode seemed to be someone different saying my name, it never felt like it was, I was going to be eliminated at the round table. That, that's a very, um, very true and- fact, because I felt the same way on mine. You know, when you go back and you watch the show, and it's like you don't realize how close it could have been for you to go, uh, but it didn't happen. But at the time, you're like, I had no idea it was that close. Like maybe you have an idea or whatever. But yeah, and, and the fact that you're oblivious to it, like you said, it just it, you you keep your mind doesn't know. If you don't know, you're oblivious to it. It's like you know, out of mind, out of sight kind of thing. So it, it helps for sure. The question sure. I have, the question I have is obviously you don't watch reality TV. You obviously got the call to come on the show. Did you want to be a trader 100%? And if so, what did you do in the interview with Corinne that got you the role? <laughs> you know, it's funny because I, I, I think I wanted to be a trader, but I wasn't too familiar with the game itself. So I would have been okay with being a faithful too. But um, the interview with Corinne, honestly, I, I feel like I was super nervous just being like in her presence there <laughs> during that moment. So I don't know what I said or what I did, but it must have been something that happened so you, so you, were that, gun, you were gun ho on being a trader I, I mean listen obviously there's some advantages of being a trader so i would want to be a trader naturally but i think i would have been okay being a faithful too i, I for me I, I, i'd only want to be a trader like being a faithful to me it just feels like your game is so out of your control like like you guys taking out erica at night one did you know who erica was by the way or no I, I didn't know who she was, but at that point, I knew she won Survivor, so I knew she must be good at this stuff. 100%. I, I have the same mentality. Like, if I was on your season, and, and if I knew who she was or I didn't know who she was, I hear, oh, she won Survivor? Let's just get her out first. Like, why not? Like, there's no down downfall to that as a trader. You're going to get out someone that won Survivor? Cool. That's great for you. There's no backlash. How are you going to get caught for that? There's no evidence. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, cool. So I feel like being being a faithful, there's just so much out of your control that like you're 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 playing a trader's game you're just kind of trying to stay to the end now uh my follow-up question to to the first one was what do you what do you think of michael john's game do you think he's uh doing a good job do you think he's in hot water do you think he's going to get out of this do you think he's going to be the last trader standing do you think he's the first trader out uh him and kira's kind of relationship what do you think of all of this well that that scene in the conclave last week was that was pretty intense between him and kira and you know, I don't think he's doing as bad as people are saying. I mean, I, agree with that. Yeah. I, I think he's doing okay, to be honest with you. And I, I do I think he's going to win the game? Probably not. But I think he's going to stay around for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's, it's hard to say. But I, I think the way Kira is approaching this and, like, actively now going after him, that's going to come back to haunt her. Because people might realize that there's some sort of... He's going to get upset about it. He's going to go attack her. She's going to be attacking him. People are going to put the two together and then maybe pinpoint that she's also a traitor. So this could happen. She's played a very good game up until now, I think. So it's hard to say. I agree. I agree. I I think the editing is making making us believe that Michael John's doing a lot worse. And sure, he's not doing great. I I don't think he's doing great. I think he's doing fine. I think he's doing better than people are giving him credit for. People are thinking he's just like like useless and da-da-da. I I think he's doing better than people give credit for. I don't think he's like this great player by any means. But I think because he's in such hot water and he's a traitor, it's it's like editing gold for the editors in the show. They're like, this is perfect. Because if that's anybody else, like a Cedric, Cedric's always in hot water. I don't know what the hell he did, but uh, I love Cedric. I'm a big Cedric fan. I love him, okay? Uh, but uh, he's always in, in hot water. Everyone's always like, it's Cedric. You know, it's like, what did he do, man? I, I, I got to know, what did Cedric do to be in this much heat? Um, but yeah, Michael John, I think, yeah, he's, he's in a lot of heat. The, the, the Kira Michael John thing is definitely coming to a boiling point. I think Kira is playing it so bad. 
Uh, but I think she's a great player. Like, I think Kira, if she could just kind of take her emotions out of it all, she's very emotional, very personal. I feel like it's all personal with him. If she could just, you know, check that, put it aside, and start thinking, okay, this is a game. Yes, I, I maybe I don't like the guy or whatever. I don't know what the problem is, but she's got to approach it way different. It's too combative, and I think Netta puts Netta in a very, very good spot. She's kind of like the swing. She's the hinge. So she can either pick to go with Michael. She can pick to go with Kira. And, you know, the things that Kira has been doing and saying, it's like Netta, it's like red flags for Netta. You know, it's like, hey, like she would do anything for this money, uh, including cutting me. And if she's ready to cut Michael, she's ready to cut me. And 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 I think when when people see that, like, I don't want to say desperation for money because it's about, you know, how important the money is to her. And Netta knows, OK, like the money's more important to her than I am to her. So I, I got to have to strike before she does kind of thing. Now, uh, speaking of Kira. I, I think the uh, the advantage. What do you think of the brother and sister thing, uh, Michael? I, I want to know your opinion on that. What do you what do you think of the whole brother sister twist um, and uh, and nobody knowing about it? What do you think of that? So I think it's a cool twist. Um, you know, I, I think other seasons of the franchise have done it. Like in the UK, there was a, a mother and son. There was also like a boyfriend and girlfriend. So I think it adds like a nice twist. Um, I, I think the brother is probably going to get pretty far in this game. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you may see him in the top five. Uh, yeah. That would be one of my predictions. He's played a good game. He's quiet. People think he's a faithful. I don't think Kira's going to murder him. Um, so I, I could see him doing well. Yeah, I, I think the other, I think they're crazy. To, sorry, Dom, go ahead. You go ahead. You go ahead. Well, the other thing I wanted to ask, which we, we kind of surpassed this, is you relating to the conclave and the stories that, that derive within that conclave there. At what point in time was it for you feeling the same way that Netta did, where it was time for Melissa B? Well, I mean, ultimately, she, she had no hope in hell, but for you to, to move on from the other traders, like, did you actually uh, strategically think about this day in, day out? Or was there certain points throughout the season where you felt the same way they did in the previous episode at the conclave where you thought okay how do i go about now it's time for them to go because at one point you did have to blackmail mickey right yeah so M melissa was out pretty early in the season and I, I don't know if you remember but i was the first one to speak at the table that day i did like a sort of a calculation i i knew she was under a lot of heat i didn't think she was going to survive but i wanted to make sure that there were going to be enough people voting for her that if i were to initiate the conversation that I wouldn't be seeing her in the conclave again that night because that would have been my worst nightmare. <laughs> um, but so this, I, I think we all knew at that point, Mel B, her time was up. But again, it was so early in the game. Uh, it was with Kuzi that was much later in the game. The only, and I had no intention of going against Kuzi. I mean, she was a mastermind. She was great at what she did. She, um, I think we were a dynamic duo together. The problem is people started coming up to me like May saying, hey, Guess who's going to say your name tonight at the round table? Koozie. Then I had Melissa A come up to me. You know, <laughs> Koozie's been saying your name. So obviously I'm going to believe them. And at that point, I had no other choice. I had to take... Uh, so, essentially, you know, so essentially, you were you were, you were were pretty loyal to them until you started hearing fumblings of your name from that person through somebody right. else. I had no reason to go after Koozie. The only reason I did it was because in my head, she was saying my name to everyone. So... It no, was so like based, a, on, based on what we're watching on season two, then you think that the same thing should essentially happen with them, or do you think that they should start planning to get rid of one or the other? Are you talking about with uh, like if they're going to get rid of Michael John or or Kira? Yeah, or Kira? Yeah, I think there's obviously going to be some conversation between them. Uh, at some point, it's. I, I think right now, I, I can't imagine Netta going for Kira at this point in the game. So I, I think she would probably side with Kira, and if they were going to vote for a traitor. But I, you know, again, I think, I think Netta, she's not out for blood right now with Michael John. So I don't know if it's her time to vote for him. I, I think she's in a really good spot because Michael John, or she knows Michael John needs her and Kira needs her. And I think she's in a very, very good spot and she can take the time kind of to like analyze what's going on, see other conversations, who's leaning towards what. 
uh, and make a calculated choice. Uh, I think. What, what what's what's it like to see a trader walk out? Like when you see that okay, the votes are going that way. You're sitting there. You know you're a trader. You know they're a trader. You know how the votes. You know you know how every vote when you see the the final verdict, how it's going to end. Are they a trader Look or not? Look at him. He's already smiling. He's you know? already smiling. He loves what's, it. Look at him. What's it like to see you know <laughs> Melissa leave, Kuzi leave, uh, you know all the traders leave? What is it? What does it feel like when you're sitting there? Well, I mean, like, obviously, it's, it's a good feeling. But again, in, in this game, it doesn't really matter because you're probably going to have to recruit or blackmail. They'll never allow just one trader to play out the rest of the season, right? So you also have to think about ahead, even if they are gone. Um, so th this was one thing I, I realized, like, I was pretty tight with Mickey. So I felt he would be my my number one choice. And I, there was already some heat on him to begin with, so he he made sense for me. It could have been very different if I brought on a guy like Trevon as a recruit for so me. So really, if, so really, if I stuck around, you would have taken me, eh? I probably would have taken you, Dom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dom loves to hear this stuff. He always he needs that reassurance. So he's you're doing you know he needs it. He's like, tell me. Uh, so do you think the way Kira and, and John are kind of arguing stuff, is she too aggressive with it? Should she kind of like tone it down? Should she like, you know, be a little louder? What, what are your thoughts? Because again, if, if she does go for him and he does become a traitor, or he is a traitor, but, and, and then, you know, he gets voted out and they're like, he's like, yeah, I'm a traitor. Are people going to be like, Hey, you know, Kira was like spot on. How, how did she know? Or are they just gonna be like, Hey, you know, Kira got it right. Like, what, what do you think people are going to, what's going to go through their heads if she's this aggressive on, on Michael John and say he does get voted out? Uh, are people going to think like, hey, she was too right. Like, how did she know all this stuff? Or are they going to be like, hey, good job. We finally did it. Because I, I also feel they're kind of really desperate to try to find a trader that maybe they'll be like, just celebrate and move over. Or do you think they're going to be like, okay, something's up. How did you know? Ta ta what are your thoughts on that, Mike? I think luckily for Kira right now, she's not the only one saying Michael John's name. There, It seems like a few people are. So in that sense, it may help her and people may not think it's a like a traitor battle. But yeah, I think she is being aggressive. She's openly told him I'm coming for you. <laughs> and I, I don't think that's the way you want to play something like this. Uh, that, that would be the last thing I would do. This would be my biggest fear. Uh, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> openly telling someone I'm coming for you. So I, I wouldn't do that. It's not my game. But um it's an emotional game. Don't let that happen but, to you. It happened to me. But I fully agree. It's like if you're going to go for someone, don't give them the heads up. You know what I mean? Just do it oh. and do it without them knowing. So they're surprised. If you if you give someone a heads up like this, like, yeah, I'm coming for you, they're going to be able to get prepared. They're going to be able to kind of, you know, set up their army or whatever they need. If you just kind of do it without them knowing, you have them kind of on their on their, on their their heels and they're like, they're not ready for it. They're not prepared. They don't know what to say. They don't know who's on their side. They don't know where people are voting. Uh, if you give them a heads up, they can kind of, uh, you know, assess the situation. Okay, I have these votes here. Those people are probably going to vote against me. Uh, she's going to bring this up against me. I got to bring this up against her. You know, these are points we got to talk about. So I, I just, I think she's doing it so wrong. I think she's doing it all wrong personally. But again, I, I don't know what it's like to be there. But in my opinion, I just feel like the way she's doing it is just way too wrong. Uh, the way I would do it anyway, uh, just very, very opposite of how I would do it. I'd be more kind of like and less quiet. The next question I have for Mike, I mean, Bruno can answer to this too, is you've been watching the season. Seems like they felt like maybe you guys had a little bit too easy. They're putting a little bit more challenges on the traders to get the, the kills with the handshake and then putting someone in the cage. No, how, cool. would that, how, how would that have made you feel being a trader? Would you, be on, would you have been on your toes? Would you have been nervous? How would you have approached that? Do you think Mike made the right decision by putting up his worst enemy in the cage? Because, like, they're making it a lot more harder now for the traders than essentially season one was, right? It's not just, hey, go to the conclave, kill somebody. You got to do something to earn the kill. Yeah, honestly, I'm loving the twists. I think that's what makes the show fresh and new and exciting for viewers. Uh, definitely, that would make me more nervous if I had to kind of shake someone's hand and tell them, get them to say, I trust you, or <laughs> this would be a very awkward moment, I think. Um, but again, Michael John, he pulled it off great. He brought the guy aside, so no one knew what was happening at that point. Um, and, and he pulled it off. But like, imagine he did that in front of people. Right. People might get uh, a, a little suspicious of this. Why are you getting him to say this? I think that's where a lot of people are under uh, underestimating Michael John. He seems to be that character that's willing to do the dirty work. The yeah. other two not necessarily might want to. He's the one that's since day one to now is doing all the dirty work. So Perfect. kudos to him and his character on the show for being the one that's uh, 
has the ability to do that because, like I said, you guys didn't really have to experience that too much on season one, and that would be challenging from a trader's standpoint to put yourself out in the open. It's pretty much giving hints to the to other faithfuls as to who potentially could be the trader, right? Now, do you think do you think Michael John's the one doing it, or do you think the girls are kind of manipulating him into doing it? Uh, and kind of playing his hand for him. I, I like again. I, I I've never played with Kira. I have played with Netta. I know how her brain works. Her mind works, and she's very very good at that. So I'm not saying she is doing that. I'm not saying she's not doing that. But sometimes you got to look at, uh, in my opinion, the bigger picture. Yes, he's doing the dirty work, but is it by his choice, or are they kind of just putting him in a in a spot where he almost can't say no? It's like, yeah, Michael, you do this, you know, and then he's like, all right, well, I guess I got to do it. Uh, so yes, you could say he's doing it, but does he really want to, or should he be doing it? Whereas you know, Netta and Kira get to sit in the back, and they they have no blood on their hands. Their job is getting done, and they're not the ones that are going to take the fall. So, uh, Mike, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think to be honest with you, it was him. He seemed really excited to do the whole handshake and I, I trust you thing. He seemed like it, this would be a cool challenge. So I think that was his choice. And honestly, with Gail too, I mean, they left it in his hands because they said, who, who do you want to murder? You, you took the $5,000. You took the shield. Who do you want it to be? So I, at that point... point which is my point. They're, they're putting him on the spot. They're saying, Hey, it's not, I didn't say her name. You did like, who do you want? Who do you want to, you know, do that? That's the way I look at it as well. But yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to I cut think, you off. Keep going. I think his personality is personality. The type that's like, I got to do this for the team. I'm going to do this for the team type thing. He's a so dumb. 50, so you're saying 50, he's you dumb. They're doing, they're, he's doing what they want and they don't really have to do much to get him to do what they want. So it kind of works out. They, they casted him on purpose. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I think he's he's happy to do this. I, I don't know if he's being pushed into it. He didn't want Gail there. We we see that. So it's now. I think that was his decision. If you're the, if you're the trader, so this this challenge. Let's talk about this challenge. So you're a trader. What 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 are you gonna do? What's your plan in this in this whole comp? You know what the key is, the right key. How are you gonna play this, Mike? If you're there this season, you're a trader. Gail's in the cage or whoever's in the cage. What what are you doing here? How are you playing this comp? Listen, if I really wanted Gale out, I would have, um, I, I can't remember now if he actually was one of the teams that were, was able to choose the key, but I would have chosen that key probably to make sure she's out because now the, the whole competition was sort of useless, uh, like his gameplay because she's still in the game, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, uh, cause here's the thing. I like how they, they, uh, there was a theory that Gale was a traitor. Right. There was a theory. I think one of them said there's a theory that Gail's a traitor and the traitors put her in the key or put her in the cage, knowing the key that was going to work. Uh, if, if you're a traitor and you hear that, that is like the light bulbs need to go off in your head and say, you know what? That, that's a really good theory. Maybe put a little bit, not like overly put the pressure on it, but, you know, bring it up a couple of times. Be like, you know what? That, that's a really good theory. Uh, and then that puts the heat on Gale. That puts the heat on uh, whoever picked the key to unlock it because it's like, well, that's obviously a traitor because they want to keep their traitor friend alive uh, kind of thing. So I, I like that that theory, even though it was wrong, but I like it. I think it's good because the other way I look at it is Gale is now hard cleared because she's in the cage. You know, if she's in the cage, obviously she's not a traitor. Like, they're, you know what I mean? So that that theory kind of, you know, debunks it in in obviously theory, but it wasn't actually the case. But I like that because if I'm on this season and I see someone in that cage, I'm going, well, they're obviously a faithful. Like, a trader's not going to be sitting in that cage. There's no way. That's not how the show works. you got to look at the show as a bigger picture because they can't get rid of a, a trader like that. I mean, maybe they can, but uh, I don't know. I, I look at it. People, I, I try like to look a trader at the will put themselves on uh, death row to, uh, to avoid suspicion, right? Like, why would a trader put them, their own name on death row? So these kind of things do happen, but you're right. I, I totally agree with what you said there. Yeah, it's just, it, yeah, 100%. Now, uh, let's talk about the vote. Melinda gets voted out. Here's, okay, here's one of my biggest problems with this show. And, and, and I love the show. I do love Traders. I think, it, I think it's one of the best new reality shows out there. Um, the problem I have with it, it, it the, the reason it's not as big as it is, I think, is because it's too casual, okay? There's one episode a week. You have the murder. You have the competition, which is way too much of the episode. It's way, they got to really either get rid of it, slow it down, or like, you know, tr trim it down. 
And then you have the, you got to get a little bit of game talk in there somewhere. You got to know what the hell's going on. And then you got the vote. You got the round table. You got all, and then you got the traders talking in the conclave. So you have all these things you got to cover in one episode. How, how do you have in one hour with 15 minutes of commercial, you have 45 minutes to get these five yeah. things out there? It, it doesn't work because there's no connection to the players. I still don't even know who half of them are. And we're, we're, you know, more than halfway through this season. I still don't even know who half of them are. There's no connection. There's a, a disconnect. So, I don't, I don't like, like even these comps where it's like, oh, you know, they're naming the players and stuff. It, it just, anyway. So, um, Melinda gets voted out, and and to 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 come back to the the beginning of that, Melinda gets voted out, and we don't see why. We have no idea why people think Melinda's this like mastermind or whatever it is or where the heat comes from because you know, twenty minutes or ten minutes of this comp of, of this episode is a competition. We're seeing conclave stuff. We're seeing all this stuff. It's time for the roundtable. All of a sudden, it's Melinda and. Uh, uh, I don't remember Cedric. who, who was it? Cedric. Cedric. You know, it's just like, how did this happen? There's, there's I such, that, I, such a I disconnect. Think that, I think there's just, I we think, don't get that information that we need. Like if you watch these other shows, Survivor, Big Brother, whatever, you see the build up. Okay, this is why Melinda's going to be voted out tonight. Or this is why these people are feuding. We don't get that because there's so much just filler and crap that is, is in front of it. So um, what are your thoughts on Melinda getting voted out? How do you even think this happened? What, what, what's, what's going on here? I think this was a buildup of over time, Melinda just being loud and proud to do what she, you know, she wanted to do within the house and, and make a name or a statement in that house. Cause uh, Lauren, I think her name is, she's the one that pretty much gave us the down low as to who Melinda really was in the house and why she was voting for Melinda. And I think a lot of other people either a agreed with uh, Lauren, I think that's her name or B they just, we're happy it wasn't their name. See, but that's, here's, that's here's the problem. If you're talking about a buildup, what was this episode? This episode was a competition. Well, like, it, it needs yeah, know, to be like, in this episode. It need, we need the buildup in this episode. We need to know people aren't remembering what happened three weeks ago. This is today. So I think I'm that just to saying me is that, the like, flaw. from the previous episodes, Melinda's name has been brought up, not to a, an extent where it was extravagant, but I just think over the episodes, it's now been Melinda's time to go. I think that's what I see. I, I wasn't there, but that's what I'm seeing anyway. My thoughts I, I on agree. Melissa. It also sounds oh, like, um, what's her name? Uh, Lauren was initiating this a lot. There were some other players probably saying Melinda's name. And people tend to just go with the majority of vote, right? Absolutely. You don't want to be sort of the outcast. Mm -hmm. So I think that's honestly what happened in, in this episode. You know, they saw a few people. They saw the vote was going towards Melinda. It's an easy out. I 100% agree. I, I think it is a lot of anybody but me mentality in, in this show. I 100% agree. But my what I'm trying to say is there's no, as a viewer, I'm not talking about like as a viewer, where did this come from? Like there's no, like show us, show us, you know, people talking about, yo, it's got to be Melinda tonight or it's this person. Like give us that back and forth. It's between this person. Like give us that suspense. Uh, Cause I just feel like we get to the round table and all of a sudden everyone's like crying and it's Melinda and it's like, what just happened? How did, how did this even get here? Uh, and I just think as a viewer, I want to know why, I, I, you know, I, I get it. Like, I understand like, yes, there's conversations over the weeks or days or whatever it is, but it's like, uh, as a player, they get it in the house. You know, they're having these conversations, show us, like, tell us what's happening. Uh, as a viewer, I just felt lost. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Uh, but I want to see more of that. I want to see more of how they get there. Like, not just at the round table, Melinda's name comes up. Tell me why. You know, show me why. Uh, cut the competition 10 minutes shorter and give us 10 minutes of them, you know, talking to each other. That's me personally. Uh, any anyways. Um, <clears throat> so Melinda gets voted out. Do you think that's a right call? Wh what do you think the uh, the traders are going to do now? What what's the traders' next move? If you're there right now and you're seeing who's left, um, you know, are you going to kill Cedric because everyone thinks it's Cedric? What are you going to do? Are you going to protect him? Are you going to get rid of him? What what's the play as a trader, uh, Mike? At this point, I have no reason to get rid of Cedric. I don't think he's saying any of their names, uh, so he's not a threat to the traders. And I, again, he's loud. He's probably going to get banished at some point in the game. So. I don't think he would be the right move. I think the, uh, I can't remember who the three were that they were deciding between. I know one of them was Pac-Man. Mm, Pac-Man, Gale, um, and I don't remember Mike, the other one. Mike. And Mike. Yeah, so I mean, these people probably won't get banished, so they have to murder one of them. I, I think, you know, Pac-Man's been very smart, very uh, strategic, too. Uh, he would probably be a good pick. I think everyone thinks he's a faithful. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing. I think for me... Uh, oh no! Actually, I want to ask you because you're you were the trader. I can give my opinion, but you were the one actually doing it. 
what what do you look for when you're looking to kill someone other than them saying your name? So say nobody's saying your name. Are you looking for what? Because like for me, I, I if I'm a traitor, I'm not going to take out the people, like you said, the loud people, the Cedrics and stuff, because someone else is going to, they're going to vote him out eventually. He's getting in everyone's way. They don't trust him. He doesn't trust people. I'm looking at the Pac-Mans. I'm looking at, I uh, apologize, the teacher's name. I don't, I don't remember her name. I'm looking at Kevin, the, the bachelor guy. I'm looking at those people that are very quiet. People obviously trust them. They're not in anybody's way. Nobody's saying their names. Um, for the most part, like as a trader, I'm looking at those people because they're not going to get rid of them. They're going to get, you know, so as long as they're there, that's one less, you know, two, three less people that are, that are, you know, they're in my way because I'm going to go before them kind of thing. So, um, you're a trader, you were a trader. Uh, what, what's going through your mind? How are you picking who, who, who you kill? Uh, who are you keeping safe? What are the players you want to keep safe? And, and obviously you said, you know, people that are coming after you, but that aside, uh, what's going through your mind? Nobody's saying your name. Who are you picking? Yeah, realistically, you know, I'm, I'm leaving the loud ones because they're probably going to get banished. So I don't have to worry about them. But the, like you said, the, the quieter ones, the ones who are not a threat to anyone, the ones who are seen as, oh, for sure they're a faithful. Uh, these are the ones I'm going to want to pick off one by one. Um, and if I had to decide between them, I would say which one's probably the biggest threat to, to me or to the traders. And that's the one that's going to go. Were did you, you guys uh, did you guys ever utilize some storylines throughout the house to pinpoint the murders to try and make it seem like it was that person? Like for instance, with Colin. With Colin, it was it was way too early in the game. I think he was the first one out, so it wasn't that. Um, I, when there's there twenty players, you only have so much influence. You can't like, really. Obviously, he got banished because he made the comment about, oh, she, she's already won money. She doesn't deserve the money. Like, did you use any of those storylines to kill the person that was that narrative was said about to then realize well, that, okay, we're going to kill on them? You remember the whole blue team, red team theory? <laughs> so this obviously, you know, led to, uh, to Kuzi being eliminated at the end because she was the only one standing it was her, Leroy, and Verlene that were left standing at the end from that team. So we always obviously knew at that point, yes, there probably was someone who had the shield from the red team. It has to be one of those three players. And so, yeah, so I who, mean. So who pushed, who pushed the storyline in that conclave that evening as to murdering someone on the red team? Because you were in there. You know what was said. What was said to push Kuzi to make that big mistake? I think because it was so early in the game and there were so many people, like, obviously, to me, it's like, oh, this is a no-brainer. Obviously, let's murder someone from the red team. And I think she agreed with it because why not? Yeah, I mean, th this makes sense. They'll never suspect us. Why would a trader do something like this? Mm. Uh, but not realizing that even though there were still, like, seven, eight players from that team, that eventually it's going to get narrowed down to... to Mike, I, I don't even think I was thinking that far ahead. Mike, so you're telling me you would never have turned on your traders, you would have gone all the way to the end with the traders kind of thing, um, unless they were kind of saying your name. Is that what you were saying earlier? That basically, you know, you were you were would you have wanted to win with your trader partners, or were you eventually going to be like, I'm cutting them out? Like, a, a time has to come. Uh, this is not something I could say. It, it, like, it's this game is so in the moment. Sure. It's like you you play it day by day. You can't really say I I, I want to cut this person or go. You have to literally take it day by day because you don't know what's going to happen. And uh, it's like I said, at that point, I never intended to to cut Koozie from the game. Um, to be honest with you, even when I recruited Mickey, I had no intention of cutting him. I, I wanted to go to the final day with him, but I, I realized the vote was going to probably go that way anyway. And if I didn't vote for him, it probably would have been me. So uh, you just kind of play the, these scenarios day by day and you kind of, you know, what's the best case scenario and you try to make it go that way. At what point did you know you won? When were you sitting there going, or did you not know until the very, very last He knew, second? he knew. Look at this, Mark, he knew. No, honestly, it could have gone either way. Um, at the end, I knew my my only play was to, to uh, be the final two with Gurleen at the end. I didn't see it working any other way. And believe me, I was up all night trying to think about, you know, <laughs> who do I need to, to be there with to make this actually so I have a chance. And Gurleen at the end, I knew would be the, the only possible way. And I was pretty, I wasn't a hundred percent sure that she could, cause she was good friends with Leroy. So I didn't know if she was going to go with me or Leroy. Honestly, it was a 50, 50. 
in that moment, I, I, I didn't know. That's, that yeah, that's wild to me that's because I'll tell, you, because... I'll tell you. I'll tell you something, man. Like, looking, I know that Leroy and Gurleen were very good friends. And sitting at the end, the three of you at the end, it should have been Gurleen and, and Leroy. Like, you realistically should have lost that. If you were looking at it, like, at a, at a you know, Gurleen should have kept Leroy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so you're saying you weren't really that surprised because you were like, eh, it could go either way. Maybe I win, maybe I lose. Or were you like, I can't believe this just happened kind of thing? I, I knew I had, like, listen, I, I there was a lot of things that I pinned on Leroy that could have made it seem like he was a traitor for, for many reasons. And you start to put that suspicion in someone's head, it, it, it helps. But not only is it what, what I was doing or what I was saying to Gurleen on that day, it's also probably maybe what Leroy was doing, right? Like, maybe he was like, okay, like, listen, we got this Gurleen, right? And, like, coming on very aggressive or very strong that... Maybe even that puts doubt in her mind. So you never know what someone's thinking, right? And then, just... and then maybe to give Bruno a little bit understanding as to the end and what can essentially make you overthink your decision is from what I heard was you guys were all secluded for the entire day. Sorry, we were all what? Secluded for the entire day. We were, yes. Um, I mean... It was, uh, we played our, our mission. Um, we, we had like the reality time where we were able to chat with each other about, you know, how this is going. But uh, yeah, it's. I don't know what Dom, I don't know what Dom's point is here. So go on, Dom. What, what, so they're secluded. How so they like at, before they, before they go to the fire to make yeah. their decisions, they're all secluded alone. No yeah. one could be together. No one could talk to each other. And I don't know how long this gone on for, but this could ult ultimately put doubt in someone's mind at the final fire pit as well. Like, how long was that, Mike? Oh, I don't remember that. Like, uh, they just didn't want us. To, you know, you're you're to for the integrity of the game. You don't want to be <laughs> like there. There shouldn't be any back talk. So they obviously separate you. So there can't be any sort of cheating yeah, or anything like that. Like, so yeah, I think that's, that's yeah, absolutely. I don't know what, I don't know what, yeah, so anyway, uh, but Mike, uh, so I want to hear your predictions for the winner of the season. Who do you think is going to win this? Do you think it's going to be a traitor once again? Do you think it's going to be a faithful? What's your final take on it? Uh, honestly, too early to tell. There's still too many players in the game to say, hey, it's going to be a traitor. It's, you never know what's going to happen. Hypothetically, Someone may get I mean, this is uh, exactly right. Hypothetically. Yeah. Hypothetically, I, I think, you know, at the end, if I was going to predict, I, I do think there will be one trader. I think Neta can probably be in the top five or at the uh, the Fire of Truth. I think you're going to probably see Nick there. I think you might see that guy Aaron there. Um, heck, you may see that Bachelor guy there. <laughs> that I, guy I, has I, done nothing. I, oh, my God. I think you're going to see, like, uh, it's going to be some of the quieter players um, at the end. This This would be my prediction. Yeah, it's uh, and and a hundred percent. I know it's it's you can't predict this. I mean, every single day things change. It's just you know, it's just it's a fun thing. You know, who do you think? Uh, but it could be absolutely anybody. Do you think the editing is showing a certain storyline that uh, you know, this person could be winning it? Like when you were watching the show, you obviously knew you won. Uh, did you think the editing was kind of geared to show why you won, or do you think it was kind of just mixed in? There was no kind of whatever. Um, you know, there was you know, or is there hints to it that maybe you know Mike's going to take this at the end? I, I think, if anything, the editing sh uh, probably showed that I was going to lose <laughs> throughout the whole game. I, I think every episode was, oh, they're going to get Mike. They're finally going to get Mike. And then it just never happened. So yeah. I think in that sense, the editing was brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's what I mean. Like, we, we don't know <laughs> who's going to take this. It might be a huge surprise to us. Well, yeah. then, if that's the case, then Michael John's in for the win, then, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it's, any, it's anybody's game, you know. At the end of the day, it's anybody's game, and uh, you know exactly. The the, the producers are going to show us what they want to show us. They're not going to show us what they don't want to show us. Uh, there could be things that you know someone said or did that was just like going to sink their game, uh, but they don't want you to know that because they want to keep that suspense. Uh, uh, one last thing I want to say before uh, before we wrap it up: thoughts on the on the on the the twist. You said you like twists and stuff. Uh, and you said there was these twists in the other shows, and yes, there was, right? There was the, the couple, and I think it was a UK one or whatever it was, and the other. But my, my big, I do have a big, I have a big problem with this because I think it's just too big of an advantage for for Kira personally. I, I think because she's a traitor, because uh, I think all the other times they were both faithfuls, right? If all the other, I don't know the, the but they're always two faithfuls, and that okay, that's fine. 
But when you have one traitor and one faithful, the brother obviously knows. And, and, and I'm going to tell you right now, like, the brother knows uh, 100% that the sister's a traitor. They're obviously not going to let the viewers know. They're obviously never going to admit it. Uh, but the brother 100% knows the sister's a traitor. He's not going to vote her out. He's going to deflect for her. She's not going to murder him. She's going to deflect for him. So they got two people working both sides to keep the traitor safe. If she wins, he wins. It, it, you know, that's how I look at it. I don't mind the twist if they're both faithfuls, if they're both traitors. I don't mind that. But having one on each side, I think, is just too big of an advantage for Kira. Uh, and it keeps her safe on both sides kind of thing, especially because nobody knows. You know what I mean? Um, if people knew, that's a different story. But nobody knows, so they can you know do their thing. And they're obviously cheering for each other. Um, I just I don't like how they're on separate sides. I don't mind the twist if they're you know both traitors, both faithfuls, but being on other sides, I, I don't know. Would you have been yes, upset? I, I, would you have been upset if you found out there was a, a someone had a because being a traitor, you know, you are you do have a little bit of a leg up, but having an extra leg up on the traitors with having your brother or sister in there, if you found that after, what would you think? I mean, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, it's like you only have so much influence in there just because. Okay, so. Nick knows that his sister is a traitor. It doesn't mean that he's going to be able to gather the vote around other players, right? Like, it, there's also that social aspect where you're, you have to be able to have the, the votes or the connections or the people on your side. So just because you may know something doesn't mean people are going to believe you. I mean, how, how is he even going to get that across? So I, I see, I do see your point 100%. But when you have two people that can say the same story and you 100% trust them, like you go in that show, you don't know Dom. You can trust him. You can trust him, but you don't fully, fully trust him. That brother and sister know no matter what, they are locked in. They're going to tell each other 100% facts. They're not going to, you know, blow smoke. They're not going to beat around the bush. They're not going to leave out uh, details. If, if you're my brother, Mike, and you're in the house with me, just put, put yourself in that shoe. If I'm your brother, we're in the house together, okay? You're going to tell me everything. You're going to literally, it's two minds working as one. It's, it's not one mind, one mind. I'm going to give you 50% of what I know. It's two people working together on opposite sides of the house with all the information you have, you can fully share it freely amongst each other. And you know, it's, uh, it's factual. It's hundred percent fact. So say I'm in the house and I have a best friend in the house, you know, best friend. And they're telling me all their secrets, their connections, what they know, who's voting, which way I can run to you and tell you, Mike, this is what's going on on this side of the house. You don't even have to talk to them, but you know what they're plotting, how they're seeing the game, what they think of you, where you are on the pecking list. And then you're on the other side talking to these people, getting all the information over there, and you come back to me and say, hey, Bruno, these guys are going this way. This person doesn't like that person. This is their targets. Da, da, da. You two can come together. I'm not saying you have all the power, but you have so much knowledge of what's the, the house dynamic that you can play a lot more than someone that has no clue. And, it's, and you can fully trust each other. That's the biggest, 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 biggest thing is it's two people that will never lie to each other. They both want to see each other win. If one wins, the other wins. And, and I think that's just too big of an advantage in a game like this. Put them both as traitors. Put them both as faithfuls. But when you have them on either side of the house, that's just too much for me. Uh, and it just, I don't know. And I th I'm surprised Dom's not as upset because Dom's all about integrity of the game and rules and da-da-da. But uh, I'll tell you, they 100% they know that she's a traitor. And I'll, I'll take that to the, I'll die on that hill. Man. I'll, die, I'll die on that hill. It's, it's, a, it's a game of money, man. And people will do things a lot worse for a lot less. Um, I don't know. I, I don't like the twist uh, like that on that side, but. But I, see it, I know it's still early. It might be interesting to see what happens with this. Maybe it's going to come back to haunt them. I mean, we don't know. You're right. We, we don't know. We don't know. I see both. I be. I see both sides. And from someone that was actually in there, it seems like I agree with Mike to the point where, like, if you do have major influence on the game, you tend to be one that's banished. But it's how so, you use it. Like this is the. Problem. I know, but bro, like, you're looking. You're looking at it oh. from the outside. Um, I've, I listen, you've played four games in these, one of these shows. I've done three months in this stuff. Okay. Dom, here listen we to me. go. Listen here we go. Me. Okay. Information is king in these houses. Yes. You know yes, what I everyone's doing. You, you can work. It, it doesn't matter. It's what you do with that information. Dom. I, I, I just, I know I never played traders. I fully understand that. I fully understand, but I'm and very familiar with these kind of saying. shows. I agree with what you're saying, but I do agree with what Mike had to say. I agree. I agree. What you're saying It's how you deal with the information is, is, is what I'm trying to say. So I, I don't know. I, I, I think I just think it's too much of an advantage, especially with everybody else not knowing that they're there. And, and we don't see them talking a lot in the house. 
which is which is one of the big big problems because I think production hides what what they're really talking about. I, I think because they're again they're going to show you what they want to show you. They're not going to show you what they don't want to show you. Do um, something. So let's say Kira tells her brother, "Hey, Michael John's a traitor. Ned is a traitor." I don't think she can do that. But even if even if she somehow signaled or whatever, signal, what is I, that gonna, yes. how is that going to benefit Nick or Kira's it's game? Knowledge. It's knowledge, man. What do you mean? That's that's knowledge is everything in that house. If you're going blind, that's the advantage the traders have is they have that knowledge. What do you mean? The the traders then, know who the traders are. And they know who the faithfuls are. How yes, are you going to say that's not an advantage? Have... That's the whole game. Have you ever Let played? Let finish uh... what he's got to say. I want to hear. Sorry, it. go ahead. I want to hear what you got to say. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like now Nick is gonna like he's gonna have to come up with theories. Hey, you know we got to go for Netta because so so so. It may make him look bad too. Like you never it's know how you point. use it. It's how you use it. If he knows and starts running in screaming, "Ned is a traitor," then of course he's gonna get voted out. Of course, it's how you use it. You can't just run in and just throw a grenade in there. You gotta slow play it. It's a social game. You guys, come on. You both know this. You know it's a social game, and and you gotta do it right. You go in. You slowly plant the seeds. You water them every day. You you know when it's your when you're getting banished, you have this in your back pocket because you actually know who the traitors are. So I, I think I I don't know I, I think you guys are downplaying it a little bit I think it's a huge advantage knowing who that's that's the advantage the traders have like you knew Dom wasn't a trader Dom didn't know you weren't a trader he thought maybe you're a faithful that's that's the advantage of being a trader you have the answer in front of you so I think by him being a faithful and having the answers in front of him uh, you know he knows maybe get closer to Michael John. He knows maybe I got to get closer to Netta. Don't get on her bad side. Get closer to her. Get closer to Michael John. Avoid these people. Like that's that's the answer to the puzzle. I, my, my opinion. I, maybe I'm wrong here, but I don't know. I think it's a massive, massive, massive. Uh, you advantage. can look at it so many different ways, bro. That's the problem. Like that's why I can agree with what Mike's saying because I was there. I get what you're saying totally from a social aspect and getting knowledge and having the information. But even if you were to utilize the information in a subtle ma like manner. It still could haunt you in the long run. That's the game. Like, that's what's everything you about. say. It doesn't matter. That's the game. That's that's it's. Uh, I'm just what my point is, and I'm not saying this guy is gonna, you know, you know. The the fact is, he has the information. That's all I'm trying to say. It's an advantage. I'm not saying it's, you know, it's just he has that information, and it that's that's the that's a disadvantage of being a faithful is you do not have that that information. That's the whole point of the game. So I, I don't know. I just feel like uh, knowing and having your sister there, kind of feeding you. Um, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how you guys can see that it's not an advantage. I don't. I don't. I just. I'm trying to wrap my head. I'm trying to understand. I just. I can't. I can't understand it. She's gonna protect you from the traitors, and you know who to get close to and who to avoid and all that stuff. I just think. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm not explaining it properly. But because people, because when you're in the house, bro, you 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 develop so many different theories. And like like I said, if he were to use the information, it might make him suspect. And then now he becomes on people's radars. And then if he doesn't use the information, what's the point? Okay, now now to stand clear of these people, but then they'll be like, "Well, you were close with us before, and now you're not. What's going on here?" Like, I think the thing too, there's so many um, different there's so many different ways to look at it. Which like, yeah, he has the information, but like just based on the way the game's designed, it could benefit or it can extremely haunt him. You you still look at this game, and maybe maybe I'm wrong. You look at this game that you have to find the traitors. That's how you look at it. You have to find the traitors. To me, you find a traitor, great. Okay, cool. The problem is they just replenish. So who cares if you vote one out? Like realistically, who cares? Have, to me, no, the trick is to. the trick is you it's connections. You gotta build these connections. If I know Mike's a traitor, I wanna be his best friend so he doesn't kill me. That's what I want. I don't want to get on his bad side. I don't want to say his name. I want to. I know now. I know. Don't mention Mike's name because if, if Mike knows you're after him, he's gonna want to kill you. And I can't defend you at that point because you know it's he doesn't know we're brother and sister. So it's knowledge. I don't know how else to explain it. You know, if I know Mike's a killer, I'm now gonna be his best friend because I don't want him coming in to kill me. I want him to protect me. But then, but then again, but then again, when you get to the final and there's you cut uh, him. and and there ends up being four people, and you didn't end up getting not one traitor. So you know that there was no blackmail, there was no recruit, whatever. There's now three at the end with one faithful. You so think like you're going to go seventeen and zero as a traitor, and you're gonna you're gonna go zero and seventeen? Come on, Dom. Like, but, but you're saying like, yeah. Eventually, you have to get a couple of them out. You have to to help the numbers for your end at at the final uh, fire. Like, 
can't just anyway. know the information and not do nothing. Uh, anyway, uh, Mike, I want to say thank you so much. Uh, you you were awesome, man. Very, very good. I love getting the inside of your head uh, and, and seeing how you see the game. Uh, I guess the faithful are going to go 0-17 this season. Uh, but, Mike, I want to say thank you so much, man. You were, you were awesome. I love the inside. I love how you see it. Um, and it's great. I think it's, I think it's absolutely great. Uh, you did an awesome job on your season. You're one, you're the only champion right now. Uh, I want to, I want to hear your advice for any future people that want to play audition for the show that do play. What's the number one advice you'd give everybody right now watching this video? Honestly, you take it day by day. Every day is different. Um, make friends with people, but be open, be neutral. I think this is the, the main thing. And the most important word of advice is listen more, talk less. I think uh, that will get you further in the game. I love that. And then, and then for me, what was the ultimate, ultimate little whisper that you did in Gurleen's mind to alter her game to get you to be the winner? I, I don't know if there was one whisper or, or anything. It was just more, you know, I, I brought up valid points about why Leroy could be a traitor and why uh mickey could have given us a clue about why leroy is a traitor i just used whatever i had honestly and I, I that was the narrative i had to push hmm. and again i don't think it was just me i think it was a combination of what i was saying and what leroy was doing so you never know everyone thinks differently everyone has their own perspective you don't know what this is the way the game is yeah no i love it and again congratulations mike dom what's your advice to anybody watching don't uh, get kicked off don't let it, Kira, if you're watching, don't let your emotions get to you because it's going to haunt you down the road. Well, it's already done. The show's already done. It's already filmed. Literally I know, but <laughs> we're, we're supposed to play it off as if we're watching every every episode. It's, it's just happening, oh, right? Cheer, we're doing? Okay, I'm sorry. It's Kira, yeah, my best advice to you is don't get your come emotions. Come on. Uh, all right. No, you guys are a lot of fun. Thank you so much for doing this, Mike. Dom, always a, a pleasure. Uh, the three Itali Look, I even wore an Italian shirt today for the three Italians, okay? I love it. <laughs> you know, that's what I did it on purpose there. So, uh, there boys, <laughs> thanks again, Mike. It was really nice meeting you, chatting with you. I, I really love the inside. Dom, always uh, interesting.